Now, let me just talk a little bit about the types of searches. Um, and, and I'm not going to get into what I think comes even before this. Basically, before you even start thinking about search, you're thinking about, and this presentation is not about that, but you're thinking of your internet marketing strategy, who's your target audience, what's the competitive space online, um, what's, what is your keyword base. Every single keyword that um, leads a person to your website or to your product or um, uh, you know, your store or even your, uh, you know, if it's a university site, every single one of those words has value and has a competition level. So when, when we start working with a client, we often start on the keyword level and the target audience. Where is your audience? What are they doing? Where are they? And you start on that keyword level because th that's a competitive level. Oh. <laughs> I have to say that um, basically this is going to pop up, but I didn't want to restart it because I did that one time and then the whole thing didn't work for a while because it took so long. So I just said, I'm going to deal with that. So anytime, thank you who is letting me know that. Um, so basically, um, you, so, so you start with keywords. And the keywords, the reason the keywords really are important is because of search. So what's really, really important is to understand how information is delivered to page one. And if you understand that whole process, in other words, where do you get the information pulled from, what are the resources, and then more importantly, how does the major search engine, I'm going to say Google, but right now Bing, is, as I mentioned before, Bing is another player that's spending, Microsoft is spending $100 million to uh, market Bing. So they want you to start playing with Bing and looking at it, and of course, you know, from a search perspective, um, we're going to have to look at how does information get onto page one in this search engine because that's going to be very important to our clients as well. So that, that jury is still out as far as what kind of a player it's going to be. But we have to understand the algorithms. For example, one of the organic algorithms today is that you need to have good valued links pointing to your website. So if you don't have decent or authority links, that's part of the formula. So it's very simple with organic search. I can just explain it like I, I use my Las Vegas model. If you put a coin in the one-arm bandit and you pull the trigger and everything doesn't line up, you don't get that million-dollar payoff. So you don't get the jackpot. Organic search is very much like that. There are a lot of pieces that go into that formula. And it changes periodically as Google decides to, um, you know, put another piece of the algorithm in it, basically to prevent spam. So once people start understanding, oh, Google wants this, then sometimes they go and they, they spam the search engine so that they can do more of it. And, um, you know, I could talk a lot about the different types of spam over the years and why Google put that other piece in place so that you can't do that anymore. So, you have to understand from an organic perspective, there are lots of little pieces, and it starts with infrastructure of your website. It starts with every keyword that you're basically building content about, and, and all of that needs to be in place. Now, there are different kinds of searches today, and some of you may not understand, why is this on page one and why not? Well, they have blended universal search today. So Google, if you look at the Google search um, engine, uh, and you go in there, you'll see that it has Google Maps, and it has Google Video, and it has Google News, and it has all, and those are all properties that Google owns. And when they do a search, if you are optimized in all of those different properties with different content, it will search all of those and pull it to page one. So that's what they call blended or universal search. Now, today, sometimes you get personal search. For example, you may be using your computer and all of a sudden, things start popping up because you used it yesterday and you were looking for cars. And now all of a sudden, they're serving you all kinds of car ads or everything that's coming up in your area because you did a search two days ago. That information is personal. It, it, it starts collecting all this data on you. And so the next time you search, you may be affected by that. Um, then there's also the whole world of local search, which is really different then, and that's what I'm going to be concentrating on because a lot of people do geo-targeting today and they want the, the local businesses, uh, not, not the world. So or there's nat, nat, um, national search and then you have your local search. Vertical organic search is what I was talking about before, where you have shopping comparison engines, you have news search, you have blog search, video. All of this is still organic search, so you can optimize for those things. 
And then we have organic real-time search, which is why everybody is so interested in Twitter these days. When the uh, plane went down in New York in the Hudson River, uh, within seconds, people were Twittering about it, and the news media was actually the last to know about it, but many people did know about it the minute it was happening. So it's an instant engine. Um, Google is right now working very hard to compete with this because Google organically had to go out, index the site, come back with information, evaluate all your words, etc. It took about a month to really get indexed correctly. So now it has Twitter out there, uh, you know, breathing down its neck. So what is it going to do? It's going to have to uh, find a way to compete with that. And I think already they've come up with some, some plan. The, the buzz on Twitter and the buzz on the internet is that there is, now Google is dealing with with real-time real search. Um, then we have mobile, which I think is going to be very, very hot. People are now having a lot of smartphones. We'll talk a little bit about that and how that is affecting search. And then you have the whole world of paid search, where you actually pay for positions, and you can do that locally. And Just a quick question. You're obviously going to continue using the word organic search. So how do you define organic versus not organic search? Well, your, your organic means you're not paying. When somebody clicks through on that result, and I'm going to show you where those results are, not it's not paid. Right. So basically, when you look at a search result page, and I have some examples of that, um, the, the, the side that's organic is usually on the left side. And when it says sponsored, it means somebody is paying an advertiser. So that's a good question. Um, so paid search, you would either be in... Uh, Yahoo search marketing platform, you would be in Google AdWords, or you would be in MSN Ad Center. Those are the three engines that you'd want to be in if you're doing paid search. And again, it depends on your marketing goals, which one you want to be on. Most people uh, in the business world, you want to be on Google. If you are doing a lot of uh, business to consumer, uh, you may want to include Yahoo. And again, the jury is still out on, on MSN. It was not a very used ad uh, center, but with Bing being used a lot, it may be it may change that may that may change a lot. Okay, so now we have um, what we call smartphones, and with smartphones, you have basically two uh, two types of search on smartphones. You have the what we call on deck and off deck. Now, on deck is is actually if you have a service provider they have a, an inventory of organic search. And that means that they're only searching their inventory. But if you have off-deck search, that means a smartphone, it goes out and it uses a web browser, and you get any search engine that happens to be out there. You could use any, any um, of the web browser. Uh, you know, your access is, is much, much more global. So you have to think about your service uh, for that. But most smartphones now have the... Um, you know, have, have the, uh, the off-deck where you can get, go out to the Internet and just get on, get on there. Um, we put in text messaging because that's a big communication tool, but it really has nothing to do with search. Um, but then you have the enabled phones that if you don't have a smartphone, it's called WAP, which is basically a, a system that confines the, the configuration of the actual phone. I'm not going to go into that much, but basically um, it will not render your website correctly. On phones like that, you don't get a really good view. You have to actually build a website that, that renders to this, this um, you know, uh, way. Or you can have a smartphone, and that's totally web-enabled so that your website looks good on those. It's configured correctly. But again, you have to build it um, for that. Um, they, they just came down in price, smartphones. So I would say that, you know, really the, the big difference is who wants to pay for the service. And it's a good question. I don't know the actual percentage. I think they say by 2012, 80% uh, of the population is going to have a smartphone. By 2012. So we're still not quite there. But, um, you know, it, it's getting more and more popular. But I think there, when people consider a phone, there are two things. That if you get a smartphone, you have to think of the service. You have to buy Internet access. So that makes it more, a little more expensive from a pay, a pay point. So a lot of the younger people, well, the younger people do have the smart or the iPhone. So <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> Now, here's a, just a, a little sample of the results that you get. Of course, the screen is small, so you, you, know, you have to think about that. Um, and today, with smartphones, you can also turn it to the side so you have a little bigger image. But, for example, if I'm looking for the BBC, um, I would be able to get not only the result uh, on my smartphone, but I would be able to click through and actually go to the website. 
Um, the, here's an interesting thing about search also. The smartphone is also GPS enabled, so it knows uh, where you are. So that's another, another positive thing, because if you're looking for pizza and you're in San Francisco, you may not have to actually say San Francisco, because basically the search engines know that if you're looking for pizza, it's really a local search. And it's, this is a tool that's not 100% yet, so you may, if you don't get results in your area, you may still need to geo-target and put in the city or town. But a lot of times it's going to know where you are, and it's going to, it meaning the search engine, is going to serve you up local results, even if you don't ask for it. it and usually it's IP driven anyway, so they know, it knows where you are, and it will target that, that area.